Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu I hope everyone's in good iman and safe and healthy Alhamdulillah, we're continuing with uh, Zad al-Mustaqni' and last week we spoke about the issues of Safar uh, particularly Qasr, shortening and today the author is going to take us through a few issues pertaining to um, joining the Salawat whether due to travel or outside of travel scenarios. So the author, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he says, Faslun fil jam' the section pertaining to joining the salawat. Al jam' lughatan al dham. Lughatan al jam' means dham, bringing two things together. Wal murabihi huna dham ihta salatain ila al ukhra. And the intent here, of course, is bringing one salah to be joined with another salah. And in general, the asbab, the reasons for al-jam are ithnan, are two. Al-safar, travel, and the second of them is al-mushaqqa, kal-matr, or al-marad, is difficulty, like rain or sickness or something of that nature. So generally, in general, joining is done due to traveling or due to difficulty found pertaining to rain and pertaining to sickness, etc. So the author, may Allah have mercy upon him, says, يَجُوزُ الْجَمْعَ بَيْنَ الظُّهْرَيْنَ وَبَيْنَ الْإِشَاعِينَ فِي وَقْتِ إِحْدَاهُمَا فِي سَفْرِ قَصْر He said it's permissible to join Dhuhrain and Isha'in in one of their times uh, in a travel wherein you would shorten the prayers. So the first thing here to mention is that he mentions the Dhuhrain, the two Dhuhrs. What is meant by the two Dhuhrs is, of course, Dhuhr and Asr. And what is meant by the Isha'in, the two Isha's, is Maghrib and Isha. And from the evidences uh, permitting joining is the Hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, uh, evidences permitting joining when traveling. In Bukhari and Muslim, Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يجمع بين المغرب والعشاء إذا جد بي السير that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he would join between Maghrib and Isha once he had embarked upon his journey. So this is an evidence pertaining to the fact that the Dhuhr can be joined with Asr and Maghrib can be joined with Isha if one is on a journey, uh, fulfilling the conditions that we mentioned in the previous lecture. طيب. Uh, if a person is known as a nazil fi safrihi, nazil fi safrihi meaning that a person is traveling but during the travel, during the journey, they decide to take a break at a particular location. So they stop traveling and they're having a break, whether that be a break for a short period or a period of a day or so. So the madhab says that in this situation, it's preferred for the person not to make jama'. It's preferred for the person not to join in this situation, okay? However, if they want to do so, they can go ahead and do so. Because what's preferred for them is to pray in the masajid. Each respective salah in its time, and especially for the men to pray in the masajid where the jama'ah is taking place, if the jama'ah, if the congregation is taking place. Okay, so the madhab says that the one who is nazil fi safrihi, the one who is not, uh, or the one who has taken a break in his journey, he's allowed even to join the salawat if he wishes to do so. However, it's better for him to pray each of the salah in its respective time and for the men to pray in the masajid. And also what is mashhur in the madhab is that it's better not, in general, it's better not to make jam'ah. It's better not to join between the prayers for any other reason except for on Yawm al-Arafah and when in Muzdalifa. Okay, these two times and places are where jam'ah is uh, recommended more so in the madhab but outside of those reasons then for any other reason a jam' is not recommended however it's allowed the author he says and as well as the one who's traveling it's also allowed for the one who is sick and if he was to leave off joining the prayers then this would bring about or cause difficulty for him so we have the hadith in Sahih Muslim where Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhu he said جَمَعَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ مِنْ غَيْرِ خَوْفٍ وَلَا سَفَرْ That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he joined between the prayers in Medina and it wasn't due to any fear nor was it due to traveling and one of the narrations he said uh, مِنْ غَيْرِ خَوْفٍ وَلَا مَطَرْ 
it was due to not have been in a state of fear, nor was it due to being in a state of rain, nor was it due to rain. So they asked Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, Lima fa'ala dhalik? Qal hatta la yuharrija an ummatihi. They asked Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, why did the Prophet sallallahu join between the prayers in Medina? He said, so as not to have caused, so as not to cause any difficulty upon the ummah. Meaning that the ummah knows after this action of the Prophet sallallahu that if there's any difficulty upon a person, he's able to join the salahs with the conditions that we are going to discuss. And that hadith of Ibn Abbas was in Sahih Muslim. Imam Ahmed, he said, after mentioning this hadith, he said, هَذِهِ إِنْدِي رُخْصَةٌ لِلْمَرِيدِ وَالْمُرْدَعِ He said, this hadith shows me, or it's a proof that the joining is a rukhsa, it's a permission given to the one who is sick and to the one who is breastfeeding. Okay, so the Imam, he held that the one who is sick in general can join the salawat. So the difficulty pertaining to the salah can be the salah, praying the salah in its respective time, this will cause difficulty on a particular person or it could be pertaining to the fact that this person is finding difficulty in making the purification that water is not available or be to be able to do tayammum for each salah is very difficult or the person is sick and for the person to do uh, tahara for each salah is very difficult so the ulama such as Sheikh Abdul Salam al he mentions a qa'ida he mentions a general rule that helps us to understand when the uh, jam' can be done he says, "Kullu udrin yubihu tarku al-jum'ati wal-jama'a, fa innahu yubihu al-jam bina salatain." The Sheikh he said that every excuse which permits a person from leaving off the Jum'a or the congregation prayer, then this excuse also is valid for the person to join the two salawat. Okay, so in the previous uh, prior to the previous session, we spoke about uh, issues whereby somebody can avoid. Uh, attending the jama'at for a variety of reasons so any of those reasons if they are found then also the person can not only leave off the jama'at but can also join between the salawat and another rule the shaykh he mentioned shaykh abdul salam al-shwa'ir he said kull mushaqqatin kharijatin anil aada he said every difficulty which is outside of the norm bi adai salaf fi waqtiha fa innahu yajuz al jam he said every difficulty which is outside of the normal situation which causes problem for a person to pray on its in its regular time then it's allowed for the person to join between the salawat a question to yourselves what person is allowed to join uh, with a type of sickness okay it's a type of sickness and we took it in Baba Tahara we took it in the chapter of purification that the person who is in this situation is allowed to join between the two salawat can anybody remember or recollect uh, what that situation is and we took it in the chapter of purification that this person is allowed to join between two of the prayers Which person am I referring to? So basically uh, the answer to this question is that it's the mustahada the mustahada the Prophet وسلم, Said to her that if you are able to join the two prayers with one ghusl Then that is better for you to do so rather than praying uh, each of them separate with a ghusl each time the one who is in a state of having istihada, the mustahada. The author, may Allah have mercy upon him, he says, وَبَيْنَ الْإِشَاعِينَ لِمَطَرٍ يَبُلُّ الثياب. And it's also permitted for the one to join between Maghrib and Isha. So he mentioned بَيْنَ الْإِشَاعِينَ here for a purpose, which means that it's not allowed for Dhuhr and Asr, this situation. This situation that we're going to discuss now is only بَيْنَ الْإِشَاعِينَ, which is Maghrib and Isha. لِمَطَرٍ يَبُلُّ الثياب. If it's raining to an extent where the clothing will become soaked, okay? The clothing is soaked to the extent that if you were to take that clothing off and you were to do that motion to bring the to rinse the clothing, then water would come out, okay? Then water would come out of the clothing. Meaning that it's raining so much that the clothing is completely soaked. Okay, and evidence for this is the hadith that we mentioned before of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he joined. Uh, in Medina and it wasn't due to fear nor was it due to rain okay so how is this hadith which I'm just quoting now that it wasn't due to fear that the Prophet ﷺ joined nor was it due to rain how is this a proof that when it is raining that you are allowed to join the salawat how is this an evidence the ulama may have mercy upon them such as Sheikh Fahad al-Mutiri he said look 
The hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said that the Prophet وسلم, joined but it wasn't due to fear nor was it due to travel and in another narration it wasn't due to rain. So it means that in normal circumstances that it's understood that if it's raining then you can join the salawat. And if a person is traveling, he can join the salawat. If a person is in a situation of fear, they can join the salawat. However, the Prophet ﷺ joined not due to these reasons, to show that they were not the only reasons. But we can understand from the hadith clearly that rain is a clear reason for joining the salawat. Okay, the Isha'in, the Maghrib and the Isha. So it's allowed to be done in heavy rain and we said that the dhabit, the controlling rule of what is considered as heavy rain is that if the clothing was to be uh, rinsed then water would come out of that clothing right so it literally drenches the clothing and it's not to be done during daylight hours as they say that this is not a situation of difficulty during daylight hours okay not like when you're traveling you're allowed to do it when you're traveling because the difficulty of travel is there however outside of traveling rain you are only allowed to join between Maghrib and Isha. Another opinion in the Madhab held by Al Qadi wa Abu Al Khattab and Ibn Taymiyyah and Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala, the humbly scholars that I've just quoted, they said that it's allowed to be done even between Dhuhr and Asr if the rain is heavy. Tayyib. So the author he told us that in the Maghrib and the Isha, if it's raining and the night is dark, uh, then a person can join between the salawat. What about if it's snowing? Question to yourselves. If it's snowing, can a person join between the salawat? Isha, between Maghrib and Isha? Exactly. So they say, min babil awwa. If you're allowed to do it due to rain, because rain causes the ground to be slushy and wet, then snow would make even more difficulty for you. Okay, maybe you would get sick with the rain, then with the snow, you would get probably even more sick. So min babil awwa, awla then you are allowed to do so with snow. Exactly. Jazakallah khair. The author, he says, وَقَوْلُهُ وَوَحْلٍ And wahl, as we took in the previous uh, section, is that when the ground is slushy, uh, full of mud, which is slippery and wet. Okay? So the, the ulama, the Hanbali scholars, they say if the ground is uh, full of mud, which is wet and sludge due to heavy rain, then the prayers can be joined. Okay? And in fact, they go as far as saying, Sheikh Abd al-Salam al he mentioned this point. He says, even if there is no difficulty with regards to the wahl, meaning the mud and the sludge being there on the ground, even if there is no difficulty, then the person could still uh, join the salawat. Because here, the, uh, it's not muqayyid. The rukhsa is not muqayyid with difficulty. It's not connected or tied to having difficulty. Rather, here, the issue with wahl, is that it's a ruksa which is mutlaq, it's an open ruksa, not tied to difficulty. So whenever there is slushy and uh, watery mud on the ground, uh, a situation similar to that, then the person is allowed to join the two prayers. The author he says, وَرِيحٍ شَدِيدَةٍ بَارِدَةٍ And also the person can join the prayers if the wind is strong and very cold. If the wind is very strong and it's very cold. And the mashhur opinion in the madhab that again this is only for the Isha'in, this is only for Maghrib and Isha and with the absence of strong moonlight. So if there was strong moonlight on a particular night then this ruling, this rukhsa wouldn't apply. Okay, but outside of there being a night where there's not much moonlight then this rukhsa, this permission applies and it's when there's strong uh, wind and that wind has to be extremely cold. Okay. And from the proofs, they say that this is one of the uh, uh, reasons that you are allowed to leave off uh, the Jama'ah. You're allowed to leave off the congregation and you're allowed to leave off the Jum'ah. So as we took before, everything that allows you to leave off the Jum'ah and the congregation then allows you to make Jama'ah. And also it was from the action of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, uh, Ta'ala, the fifth right, rightly guided Caliph in Islam, according to many, that this would be his action uh, that he would join on a windy night when it was extremely cold, when the wind was extremely cold. The author he says, وَلَوْ صَلَّ فِي بَيْتِهِ أَوْ فِي مَسْجِدِ تَرِيقِهِ تَحْتَ السَّبَاطِ Even if it be the case that when these things are present like the wahl and the, the strong wind, okay, and it's extremely cold in the night, he said even if the person in, is at home in his house, not praying in the masjid, 
Because remember the humbly, uh, the mashur opinion, the famous opinion in the madhab is that the men do not have to pray as an obligation in the masjid, though it's something which is highly recommended. However, Ibn Qudama did hold, did hold that all of the congregation prayers, like Ibn Taymiyyah also, should be in the masjid. Okay, this is the stronger opinion and Allah knows best. But however, the, uh, the mashur, the famous opinion in the madhab is that the man can pray in congregation at home or any other place. So the author he says, even if the person prays in his house, okay, then it's allowed for him to make jam. Then it's allowed for the person to join between the two salawat. And also, if the path to the masjid is tahta sabat, is underneath sabat. Sabat are like the houses they have coverings to the extent that each side of the pathway, uh, the houses they have a roof that literally connect with each other. Uh, so it causes uh, the path to have a covering all the way to the masjid. He said, even if it's the case that the traditional pathways and houses are built in such a manner that there's a, a covering protecting the person on the way to the masjid, that even in this situation, because wahal is found on the ground, the ground is slushy and muddy in general, then the person even in these situations can pray, uh, can make jam at home. Okay. And the reason they mention this because they say, uh, that the general ruqsa which is permitted for this situation the general permission which is permitted for a person to make jam'ah in these situations that we're mentioning that whether there is difficulty tied to it or not it still applies so Sheikh Fahad al-Mutiri Hafizullah gives an example of this he says look there's a ruqsa for you to make combination jam'ah whilst traveling but what do you say about the person who's traveling on a five-star train where he has his own bedroom he has people serving him there's no difficulty whatsoever. He's being treated with a five-star service. So this person is still allowed to join in this situation, even though there's no mushaqqa, there's no difficulty, because the rukhsa is am. The rukhsa, the permission is general. Okay? So this is the uh, position of the madhab, and Ibn Qudama, as an opposing opinion from the madhab, he said, no, it's not allowed to join in these two situations because there's no difficulty there. There's no difficulty there. However, our author, and those who agree with him, the majority of the madhab, they say it is permissible, it's permissible to join in the situations which I just, just described. The author, he said, With regards to whether a person should make jama' taqdeem or jama' ta'akhir. Jama' taqdeem is that you would pray asr in the time of dhuhr or isha in the time of maghrib. And jama' ta'akhir is that you would pray Dhuhr in the time of Asr or you would pray Maghrib in the time of Isha. So here the author, may Allah have mercy upon him, he's saying to us that it's better for you to do that which is easier for, for you pertaining to whether you do it as Taqdeem or Ta'akhir. Why? Because in Surah Al-Baqarah, as an evidence from amongst the many, Allah says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَى وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for you to be in a state of ease and doesn't want for you to be in a state of difficulty. So wherever the person finds ease, that is what he should act upon with regards to taqdeem or ta'akhir. However, uh, the mature opinion in the madhab is that if it makes no difference to the person whether the ease is there for taqdeem or ta'akhir, meaning that uh, whether he does it in the time of dhuhr or he does it in the time of Asr as uh, Ta'akhir, it makes no difference to him in terms of ease, then what's preferred is that the person does it as Ta'akhir. The person does it in the time of Asr or in the time of Isha. Okay, not in the time of Dhuhr and not in the time of Maghrib. So in a situation where there's no difficulty on the person, both situations are the same, whether it's Taqdeem or Ta'akhir, then the author he says or the uh, the madhab it says that the person should do it as ta'akhir that is better for them and from the reasons they say this is because there is a difference of opinion with other scholars within the madhab and outside of the madhab whether taqdeem should be done or should not be done okay whether taqdeem should be done or should not be done so in order to avoid this then it's better to do it as ta'akhir and also Another reason they say is that when the person does it as ta'akhir, then this ensures that both of the times for the salawat have been established. Meaning that if you're going to do dhuhr in the time of asr, then it means that the time of dhuhr has already come about 
and the time of Asr is present. So this is a better situation than doing it in Taqdeem where the time of Dhuhr is there but the time of Asr is not there. It's a more complete situation and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. The author he says, فَإِنْ جَمَعَ فِي وَقْتِ الْأُولَى اشْتَرَطَ نِيَةُ الْجَمْعِ إِنْدَ إِحْرَامِهَا If the person makes the combination of the prayers in the first of the times, which is which is Jama Taqdeem, so he does uh, Asr with Dhuhr or Isha with Maghrib, then it's conditional that the person has the intention to join in the Ihramiha, okay? Before uh, the Takbirat al Ihram, okay? فَإِنْ جَمَعَ فِي وَقْتِ الْأُولَى اِشْتَرَطَ نِيَةُ الْجَمْعِ إِنْدَ إِحْرَامِهَا Now, so if the person for example, to make this clear, he has to have, the, like I said, he has to have the intention at, uh, at the time of making the takbirat al-ihram that he's going to join the two salawat. Okay, otherwise it's not valid. So for example, to make this clear, if an imam is in the masjid and he's praying maghrib, and now in the second rak'ah of maghrib, there's a heavy shower downpour, and the people know, everybody in that locality, including the imam, knows that it's likely that it's going to be flooded because of the nature of the showers that we have. So he's already started Maghrib, then it's not allowed for him to now make the joining of Maghrib with Isha. Why? Because he didn't have the intention to join with the Takbirat al-Ihram of Maghrib. So the intention of joining has to be there with the Takbir of the first Salah that you are going to join. Okay. Another riwayah held by Ibn Taymiyyah, another opinion in the Madhab held by Ibn Taymiyyah and Rahimullah Ta'ala and Ibn Ibaz and Rahimullah Ta'ala they said that the condition of having the niyyah of jam from the first prayer doesn't have to be there. So in the situation that I gave, if the Imam is praying and in the second rakah of Maghrib there's a heavy downpour, after finishing Maghrib he can join with Isha. However, according to the author's opinion and the majority in the Madhab, they said no. The intention has to be there from the first takbir that you are going to join between the two salawat. A second condition pertaining to joining the author he says, وَلَا يُفَرَّقُوا بَيْنَهُمَا إِلَّا بِمِقْدَارِ الْوُدُوءِ And you do not def- uh, separate between the two prayers except to the extent that is required for making wudu. Okay? So this is known as الْمُوَلَاتِ بَيْنَ salatain That the continuation between the two prayers. So they say that wudu, a quick wudu, that amount of time is allowed because that is a need which cannot be overlooked. Okay? And uh, the importance of having the two prayers together because we should remember that the humbly scholars they consider the two prayers, whether that be Dhuhr and Asr or it be Maghrib and Isha, they consider it as one prayer when you are making jam. Okay, so they consider it as one prayer. So they say there has to be Mu'alat there because linguistically jam has the meaning, as we said, of dham, of bringing two things together and muqarana, of bringing two things close together. And this is how the Prophet ﷺ always did it. The Prophet ﷺ didn't leave long gaps, okay, between the two prayers that he would join. So they said that if you were to leave a long gap between the two prayers, then the wisdom of joining is lost, okay, because the two prayers when you're joining, they become considered as one according to the Hanbali scholars. Therefore, Mu'alat has to be there, except for the Miqdar, except for the duration of somebody making a quick wudu, if that is needed, that much is allowed, okay? Ibn Taymiyyah is from those in the Madhab who held that this is not a condition. Mu'alat doesn't have to be there, but even those who held that it doesn't have to be there, they said that there shouldn't be a long period of time that elapses between the performance of one salah, one of the prayers, and the performance of the other of the prayers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Okay? So Ibn Taymiyyah, who's saying that there doesn't have to be a muwalat as a condition, there doesn't have to be a close proximity uh, of time between the two prayers, they're saying, look, uh, this joining is a rukhsa. Making jam' is a rukhsa. And for a person sometimes to join immediately one salah to the next, it's going to be something difficult to, for them. Rather, they should be given a leeway of having some time if they need to that they can pray one salah, do things that they need to do, and then go ahead and join the other salah. This is the opinion of Ibn Taymiyyah and those who agree with him. Okay, So they say that the, uh, the muwalat is not a condition. However, there shouldn't be a long time gap between the two salawat. The author, he says, وَيَبْتُلُوا بِرَاتِبَةٍ بَيْنَهُمَا And the prayer or the gem, the prayer, the, it becomes invalid if you do a supererogatory prayer 
a sunnah or a nafal prayer in between these two, okay? So if you do a nafal or a sunnah ratib in between the two prayers that you are joining, then it becomes invalid. And what do they mean that it is invalidated? They mean not that the prayers are invalid. The first prayer would be correct, but the second prayer would be incorrect, okay? Because now you've made a separation between the first and the second with another salah, with a ratib salah. So they don't accept this, okay? They said it invalidates the jama, but it doesn't mean that it invalidates the first prayer, okay? So now this is a, this is a condition in jama taqdeem, but it wouldn't be a condition in uh, jama ta'khir because there's no mu'alat, there's no mu'alat in jama ta'khir. What fard prayer might be done that would break the tartib? What prayer may somebody want to do in the middle of two jam that would also break the tartib? What situation could there be where somebody wants to do a fard prayer whilst joining dhuhr to asr or maghrib to isha? So they say al-qadha, for example, if you're making up a salah, you, you have a dhuhr from yesterday to pray. So when you're joining dhuhr and asr, somebody may think, which is the norm, that you pray dhuhr of today and then you pray the dhuhr of yesterday and then you would pray other salawat uh, continuing in the day. So somebody may think of doing that, but that would be invalid, that would be incorrect. Okay, it's not allowed to have a ratib salah in between the two that you are joining, nor is it allowed to have any qadha salah in between the two that you are joining okay and another riwayah from the madhab of imam ahmed says that it doesn't break the jam if you have a ratiba in between and of course the reason they say that because they don't hold the muwalat the continuity to be a condition uh, to be there type the author he continues and he says وَإِنْ يَكُونُ الْعُذْرُ مَوْجُودًا إِنْدَ إِفْتِتَاحِهِمَا وَسَلَامِ الْأُولَى that the condition, the third condition, is that the other, the excuse must be there uh, when the first of the prayers is open, meaning the takbirat al-ihram of this first prayer is there, and also the salam of the first prayer. Okay? So, what, what literally what he's saying is when you make takbirat al-ihram of the first prayer, you have to have the condition. The condition which allows you to join uh, has to be there. And also when you start the next prayer, that condition must still be there. For example, the heavy rain, it must be there when you make the first takbir. And also it must be all the way there until you have finished by making salam of the first prayer. Why do they say that you have to have the, uh, the udr, the excuse there when you are making uh, the joining at the takbir of al-ihram? And all the way till the salam is there. Why do they say that? They say, look, the intention to make jam has to be that takbirat al-ihram you have to make a niyyah and the only time you can make a niyyah if there's a udr, if there's an excuse meaning a reason for you to make jam so you can't intend to join two salawat if the reason for you joining the two salawat is not there this is what they mean so the udr, the excuse has to be there at the first takbir and it has to continue all the way until you start the second salah is what the author is saying the author he says, May Allah have mercy upon him. وَإِن جَمْعَ فِي وَقْتِ الثَّانِيَا إِشْتَرَطَ نِيَةَ الْجَمْعَ فِي وَقْتِ الْأُولَى If you are going to make jama ta'akhir, you're going to pray dhuhr with asr or maghrib with isha, then you have to have the intention from the first salah, okay? From the beginning of the first salah or in the time of the first salah. Does anybody know why? Why do you have to, if you're going to make jama ta'akhir, do you have to have the intention uh, that you are going to join from the time of the first salah? Question to yourselves. Barakallah feek. Remember we said that the prayer is considered as one. Yeah? So that's not the answer inshallah. But Jazakallah khair and I reward you for trying. Uh, so what the ulama they say, they say that look, you are joining now dhuhr with asr. And if you don't make the intention at the time of dhuhr, it means that you are willingly delaying dhuhr salah outside of its time. Okay? So that's why you have to have the intention at the time of dhuhr. So you have to have the intention at the time of the first salah if you're going to join it in the time of the second salah. And the author, he says, إِن لَمْ يَضِقْ عَنْ فِعْلِهَا As long as the situation doesn't come to a point that I am intending to join dhuhr to asr, 
but I haven't made my intention up until the point now where the time of Dhuhr is about to go. So there's not enough time left for me to even pray the Dhuhr Salah. They said this now you're in a situation of being in a sinful state. You have to do it, you have to make the intention to join before that time arrives, wherein that if you were to pray Dhuhr now, you wouldn't have enough time to pray Dhuhr. So you have to make the intention before you get to a situation where there's not enough time left for you to pray the Salah that you are supposed to be praying now, which is Dhuhr, okay? So if you're going to join Dhuhr to Asr, the intention has to be made as soon as possible at the time of Dhuhr. وَإِسْتِمْرَالُ الْعُذْرِ إِلَى دُخُولِ وَقْتِ الثَّانِيَةِ And the continuation of the Udr, the excuse for you joining, has to be there until the second Salah is going to be prayed. Okay, or the, the, the time of the second Salah. And the reason they say that the Udr, the excuse has to be there because again, that is the reason for the person to join. So an example to make this clear, a person, he intends to pray Zuhr with Asr. He tends to pray Dhuhr with Asr as Jam uh, Ta'khir, okay? But he arrives to his destination early, in the time of Dhuhr. So now here, he has to pray Dhuhr in its time, and he has to pray Asr in its time. Because now the excuse, the Udr, for joining the Salawat from the journey has now gone, okay? So he's become a resident because he arrived early, though on the journey he had the intention to pray uh, Dhuhr with Asr, but maybe the pilot took a different flight path, he got home a few hours earlier and he's arrived in the time of Dhuhr, so here he cannot make the jam. He cannot make the joining of the prayers because the Udr is not there uh, in the time of the second prayer. Okay, he arrived in time of Dhuhr, so he has to pray Dhuhr on time and he would have to pray Asr on time without joining the two. Another mas'ala to mention here is that if a traveler returns from a journey ahead of time, and he intended to make Jama'at Ta'akhir for Dhuhr with Asr. So the person, he wanted to pray Dhuhr with Asr, okay? But he arrives home now in the time of Asr. He arrives now in the time of Asr and he didn't make the jam whilst he was on the journey. So this person, he says to himself, I'm going to pray Dhuhr with Asr. He made this intention while on the journey, right? But he ends up arriving home early. He arrives in the time of Asr and he didn't make Dhuhr and Asr together on the journey. So what does he have to do now? Now he still can make the two Salawat together, but he cannot make Asr. So he prays them as Jam, he prays Dhuhr and Asr together, but he can't pray them as Qasr. He has to pray them as full, as mentioned by Shaykh Uthaymin in his Sharh al mumti Another Mas'ala which is important to mention, that a person when joining the Salawat, it could be that the first prayer he prays in congregation and the second prayer he prays individually or vice versa. The first he prays individually and the second he prays in congregation for whatever reason. This is permissible. It doesn't affect the joining of the prayers. Nor does it affect the joining of the prayers whether a person prays one salah, the dhuhr behind one imam and the asr behind another imam. The joining of the prayers would still be valid in that situation. Another important mas'ala to mention is this last and final one where the mashaykh they mentioned that uh, the Hanbali scholars they said the joining of Jum'ah with Asr is not allowed. So Jum'ah, Salatul Jum'ah is not allowed to be joined with Salatul Asr. And from the proofs they give of this is the hadith in Bukhari and Muslim where the Prophet وسلم, was upon the member and a Bedouin came to him and asked him Ya Rasulullah the crops and the livestock have been you know, have, have become uh, at a loss due to the drought. So make dua for us. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made dua to Allah Azza wa Jal and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala immediately sent, round, sent down the rain in answer to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the rain that came down was extremely heavy, but it wasn't narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam joined the Jummah to Asr, even though the excuse for joining was there, which is heavy rain. So they say based upon this hadith, because the Prophet ﷺ didn't do it for Jummah and Asr, therefore it's not permissible for us to do for Jummah and Asr, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. We'll stop here, reason being because the next topic that we're going to take is quite a lengthy and detailed topic, so I don't want to rush into it. We'll stop with this uh, amount, Naqtafi Bihadil Qadr. We'll stop at this amount so that we can go back and review and think about what was said. If you have any questions on the topic of joining the Salawat, then feel free.
وجزاكم الله خير